Wait. Stop scrolling. Do you like to be afraid? Well, this week, the Arts Fam invites you to wait until... Hi, and welcome to the Arts Fam Podcast. It's the only show of its kind that spotlights the arts and entertainment scene in Southern Maryland. We're your hosts, Lindsay Pomerank and James Lepore, and every week we bring you a whole list of all the fun things you can do this week in Southern Maryland, as you're always saying, James. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, especially if you throw it at him. Well, my goodness. No, I also say <laughs> there is more to do here in Southern Maryland than you have time to do. Absolutely. Speaking of, get us started. Okay. There is a, a great event. It's at Leonardtown High School. It's called Rhythm 2024. Now, this is a yearly thing they do. It's a performing arts show to benefit Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. It's a great, great. That's um, great. Yeah. So it's fun, dancing, singing, music. It looks outstanding. Yeah. It's Saturday, January 27th from 530 to 830 p.m. Leonardtown High School, which is Point Lookout Road, Leonardtown. Premium seats are $15, $10 for general seats. And you can get tickets right online at www.fly4acure.org. That's great. All right. So on my end of things to start out with, we have the annual appraiser fair at St. Clement Island Museum. And I that's... love that. Oh, you do? I've been, Okay, yeah. I haven't been. What's oh, it like? It, it's great. Yeah, yeah. okay. So it's at St. Clement's Island Museum, and it is on January 27th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It says appraisers will be available to offer oral appraisal to members of the public for the following categories, fine arts, dolls, coins, and currency. So if you have something that you think might be worth a little Look something. around the house. Yeah. You know, you know what's really crazy cool, though? Stories. When you line up to get to the appraisers, mm -hmm. just seeing what people have Brought. That, you know, some people have paintings and you know, and yeah. like other things in their pockets. It's it's pretty you, cool. You never know. Maybe you have a thousand dollars painting that you thought was like yard sale auditions. I think it's important that we talk about auditions because yeah, you know, we, we don't just report on shows. There's people that want to go audition mm -hmm. for shows. PTP. I mean, a, a theater we know well is going to be doing a raisin in the sun, <gasps> and they're having auditions January twenty seventh at ten a.m. January 29th at 7 p.m., January 30th at 7 p.m., and if they need callbacks, they'll be February 3rd at 10 a.m., and the auditions are going to be held on stage at Port Tobacco Theater. Okay. Next, on January 26th, all the way till February 25th at the Anne Marie Gardens in Dowell, Maryland, and you know we love Anne Marie Gardens. Always something cool going on at Anne Marie Gardens. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an art exhibit. Oh, cool. It says, Prominent Sculptural Works by Claudette Taylor. Explore the work of artists resident in this gallery show consisting of a selection of clay busts and figurative sculptures of prominent leaders, thinkers, dreamers, and other important people in the artist's life. Known for portrait sculptures, Claudette employs gentle shapes with an emphasis on bold lines to bring her artistic vision to life. And it says she was influenced by everyday people who positively impact society. And that's a really great thing to celebrate in art. And what a cool way to highlight that. I have no concept out how people can create something in oh. 3D. You know, I had heard, I, know. I don't know who, yeah. who's quoted as saying this, but somebody had said, how in the world do you... Mm -hmm. you, do you do this? And he said, well, I just remove everything that's yes. not supposed to be there. I know exactly what you're talking about. And when I think of that, I'm like, there are people's brains that work that way because mine doesn't. But I, I guess. But again, yeah. it's not, I can paint, I can draw, but sculpture, no, that's a talent <laughs> unknown to me. <laughs> All right. So yeah, get out there, go enjoy that. So just go. You'll have a great yeah. time. This is something completely different. We've never had this before. Open acoustic jams. Ooh. They call it January, right? Sunday, January 28th from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, at Bay Fibers Studio in Leonardtown. They're always doing fun things yeah, in Leonardtown, right? Absolutely. It's um a, a laid-back, open acoustic jams, a folk, bluegrass, old-time classics. They're going to lean mostly into acoustic jam style, guitars, banjos, mm -hmm. fiddles, mandolins, bass, light percussion is welcome. Okay. So, you know, if you want to... Yeah, well, well. Percuss, go, go <laughs> over there that day, and hand drums. And they're also looking for singers, especially harmonizers. Ooh. I can sing, but I can't harmonize. How about you? I can't sing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess, well. Not for me, but you, <laughs> you creative people out there, you go do that and have a good time. Yep. Next, I have something called 
art. And I say that because it has exclamation point. Wow. <laughs> the Art of Drawing Birds of Prey. And that's on Sunday, January 28th. Oh, I like it. Yeah. From 2 to 4 p.m. That's at Calvert Marine Museum in Solomons. It says, learn about the lives and habits of our native birds of prey with a naturalist talk, followed by an art workshop where you can learn how to draw the birds of prey. And it says that all levels can come and enjoy this. You just need to be 16 years or older. That is certainly something different, too. Yeah. And then you take home your drawing. I'm like, that just sounds so unique. I like it. So, like, get out there. Do it. January 27th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., five hours. Kids Barn Day. Now, it takes place at Free Rain Equine in Hollywood. Okay. It says this fun day will offer riding lessons, arts and crafts, workshops on horse care, health and nutrition, General equestrian knowledge. That sounds Ooh. so fancy, doesn't it? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say it again. Word. Equestrian knowledge. I, I always like love the word and, equestrian. And lots of fun, active games. The cost is $60 okay. per rider, and spaces are limited. Next, I have Parents Night Out. So it says, Sparkle and Sass Dance Company. You need a break or a date? We'll take the kids. Go enjoy your night. They'll dance, eat pizza, and watch the movie Abominable. While you go do whatever you want to do. The cost is $20 per child. And they just three and up are welcome. So I'm like... Cheaper than a babysitter and all that fun stuff. Yeah, no kidding. And we could go because you sparkle and I have sass. So... (laughs) It was right to me. Finally, on my end of things, on January 26th from 7 to 8.30 p.m., there's meowing at the moon. Are are you going to say it's at our favorite? Oh, yes. I'm going to be like Bella's Cat Cafe. I had a feeling that we were going to be like involved with more stuff with them. Yeah. So get there. It's a paint party and there's going to be like a little cat painting that you get to do while you hang out with your little furry felines and it's later at night. So they're really cuddly and cute and sweet and I'll let you guys in on it. My husband and I may have already registered. Mm -hmm. So... If you want to meet me, I'll be there hanging with cats. And you know what? If if you're unfamiliar with this too, please watch last week's episode where Lindsay and I actually conduct the interview from the middle of the cat cafe with 21 little furry friends running around. It was awesome. (laughs) Okay. Speaking of awesome. Okay. last, Last one I've got for you. The play, Wait Until Dark, January 19th to February 4th. It's at the Port Tobacco Theater. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you about this show. No. No, let's not. As a matter of fact, you want to know about the show? Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We are here with the director and the two leads of Poor Tobacco Players, their newest production of Wait Until Dark. Super psyched. Super psyched. All right. You but want we to... got to see it. It was it was great. <laughs> yeah. So now you're going to find out who puts this all together. with Mike Gann, the director. Mm-hmm. Caitlin bauer Dieguez, who plays Susie Hendricks. And Randy Tusing, who plays Harry Rote Jr. and Sr. from Scarsdale. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming out here to the studio. We saw the show last night. And a lot of times with longer plays, you kind of feel like you're chained to your seat during certain spots because it gets like oh god is it ever going to end <laughs> did not feel that way i won't say what show is i don't know no, no. <laughs> but it did not feel that way at all two and a half hours and it was like especially the second act just light speed i mean it's non-stop excitement yes so that, you'll see yeah Let's start us off Lynn. mike when were you first exposed to this show and then why did you decide to direct it well i'm the oldest in the room I saw the movie in, in the mid '60s with Audrey Hepburn, and fell in love with it. And I've always liked it. And I put in to direct it three times. Oh, whoa. Before they accepted. It. Wow. So, so this has been a long time coming. Then. Oh yes. If you were to break down the plot of this show in a couple sentences, what would it be like? So the husband Sam, mm-hmm. he happens to be on a business trip, and he ends up with a doll that someone's asked him to give to somebody. Okay. And he loses the doll. It turns out the doll is a special doll, and three thugs want the doll. So they figure out a way to make sure that Susie and Sam are not together, and they want to coax the doll out of Susie. I think that's about all I'll give as a teaser. Yeah, and that Susie is blind, so that that adds a layer there. Right, right. So, Caitlin, this is one's for you. You portrayed a blind woman, and, and can I say from the bottom of my heart, 
oh my gosh, you were convincing. <laughs> there was that flash thought in my head when you first started. And I was like, oh God, don't fall off the stage. Yeah, I, I'm and so I was like, oh my God, Lindsay. Oh, Ch- Kayla's going to walk into that. And like, no, she knows like, it's oh there. Oh my God, Lindsay, she's not actually blind. She's acting. <laughs> it was utterly convincing. How did you get there? A couple of different ways. First off, right around the time that we started rehearsing, a show came on Netflix based on a book that I love, All the Light That We Cannot See. Hmm. And it actually has a real blind person portraying a blind character oh, that's great. which is basically unheard of yeah. until now yeah. Yeah. and watching just the opening sequence of that really gave me almost everything I needed just how she touched everything was so beautiful and graceful mm-hmm. just how she used her fingers almost like an individual eye as each finger yeah. I kind of just took that and ran with it and then I would just walk around my house with my eyes closed to see how familiar I was with I was wondering if that was going to be like yeah. some kind of yeah I mean I didn't want to do it like on the set because that's not safe no uh, but someplace <laughs> I was familiar so I've lived in my home for seven years now and I just kind of practiced getting ready for bed mm-hmm. with my eyes closed I know where everything is I don't really need it unless my yeah. kid has left something on the floor and then yeah but. now not trying to get you to spill actor secrets but is there a particular spot in the room that you are looking at so that your uh, gaze stays the same direction at all times i generally try to look over their shoulder right here okay. i try to like go to the mouth area and kind of if i'm talking to somebody if i want to look at them i just kind of look right oh, okay. gotcha. so, yeah. you do an amazing job well and i will say while i was watching it there were a couple times where i was like is that an error that was just made? But then it would be incorporated into the dialogue and I go, oh my gosh, it wasn't. So hats off to you, Mr. Director, for helping to block that whole thing to make it so utterly convincing that the reviewer in me clenched for a second. That was great. And then for you following that blocking. Now, balancing out your lovely, sweet character, we have the mean, awful, nasty (laughs) uh, (laughs) Harry Rote Jr. and Sr. He's an evil guy. A little bit of a sadist, too, I I would say. Uh, How do you get yourself into that mindset? You just investigate the character through the lines that you're saying and what you're thinking and relating to what's being said to you. And you find these different things. If you're supposed to be this happy character, well, there's not just one way to show happiness. So you try as many different things as possible. Mm -hmm and bring them to rehearsal and do them so the director can see all the changes. If anybody were to ask me at any given part, and I know Kate can do it too, any given line, she'll tell you who she's saying it to, what the intent is, Mm -hmm. what emotion she's trying to get across. It's just this culmination of things. The the thing that is very interesting about Rote in in movies and TVs and characters and in plays, almost every bad guy you'll come across has a thread of humanity, has a thread of yeah. goodness that you, the actor, can latch on to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. For instance, Mike and Carlino in the show. They are good, decent people. Yeah. They are not rote. They are not co- criminals. They have they a conscience. Hard, yeah. They, yes. Yeah. Rote, there is no single thread. Dim did the role too. I a did. A bunch of years ago. <laughs> I did. So, but it's like any other role. Whatever character you're playing, you begin to find Mm -hmm. those things that help you kick into it. Knowing you in real life, and (laughs) you're real nice and easygoing and everything, (laughs) and then one of the Harry Rhodes of three is kind of funny and kind of very innocuous character, talking about Montreal trips and things like that. Mm -hmm. So when we got to actually see your real evil sign. It was quite shocking. I knew what was going to happen. I've been in the show, you know, but I mean, it still caught me a little off guard thinking, oh my gosh, he is. Well, that's good and not to give anything away, but I'm trying not to. (laughs) But the way I portray him, he comes out earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes. In that first scene. The best compliment I heard last night was when we truly saw him then, the person leaned over to me and said, he is terrified. Yeah. Yes, he truly, I was sitting there in my seat just... <laughs> well, actually, we, we talked about this a little bit last night, too. This is a Stephen King quote uh, in his book, Dance Macabre, who, and he says that Harry wrote in that movie is one of the most terrifying, mm-hmm. evil characters of all time. So I had never seen the show before. I didn't 
know anything about it. I went in blind. Oh, you didn't even see the movie? No. And oh, honestly, when I it went in blind? <laughs> yes. I get it. Okay. <laughs> honestly, I'll level with you. That is my favorite way to see theater. Cool. Is when you go in and you know nothing. <laughs> and you don't know the story. Nothing. And then, of course, I research afterwards and I nerd But you run the risk that. of running out screaming if you don't like it. Well, then you shouldn't do theater. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You go in with Good. So I had heard you were the bad guy, right? But I didn't know the details. But when he first comes on, I was like, I mean, Randy, I don't know if Randy can do this. Like, yeah, it doesn't seem too bad really to me. Yeah. But like, I don't, I don't know. And then as it escalated, and then when it escalated, I was like, oh, oh. Yep, he's, yes, he can. Yes, he you. can. Mike. During auditions, what was it that you saw in Randy that was, said, that's Rhodes? Well, the part of Rhodes, as you've described, is at least three characters, which is going to require a lot of time backstage, changing costumes, hair, makeup, mm -hmm. and then converting to the next person. Because mm -hmm. there are subtle differences between each one of them. We, we needed an experienced actor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Randy's obviously got experience. Mm -hmm. And... We also have to be dependent upon who shows up to audition. When I called him to ask him, he didn't want it. He oh. actually wanted another part. Oh. What? And I said, no, I want you for this part. <laughs> Which role? You mean another, another role in the same yeah. show? He Which wanted role? another role in the same He wanted the part of Sam Carlino. Sam or Carlino. Right. Really? <laughs> yeah. oh. Interesting. He, there was some little comedy with both mm -hmm. Sam and Carlino. Yeah, yeah. He Absolutely. wanted to try that, but I said, yeah. <laughs> please say yes to <laughs> me taking a <laughs> road. And we have this little joke together. He never says yes to me, mm -hmm. but he'll still participate. So, uh, <laughs> it was so great that he actually said yes. <laughs> well, now what about Caitlin? What what did Caitlin, she do that said, oh, that's that's our blind heroine? Well, you saw it. From the very beginning, her physicality. In fact, we joke about one of the first times that she comes out, her very first line. Sam, she looked like a blind person saying it right mm -hmm. off the bat. Yeah. And you go, well. She just said Sam. Then she joked about, I got that line down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it was um, the one I had memorized. <laughs> yeah, but her, her physicality, right from the beginning uh, in the audition, I remember in the audition you fell down in one scene uh, out of fear. And I don't think anybody else would have even thought about that, but it was perfect. Now, Caitlin, before you started rehearsals, were you actually practicing how you're going to portray a blind girl or you just let it happen naturally no. at, at uh, no, rehearsals? No, not at all. So I was trying to decide up to the last day if I was auditioning or not simply mm -hmm. because life well, a is a lot. Yeah. Now, at the end of the show, there's quite a bit of physicality and it can get pretty dangerous in the dark. Mike, mm -hmm. what kind of things did you do to ensure the safety of your actors? Randy and I had a lot of discussions about that in the beginning because if you've seen the movie, there, there's some physicality that's just too much. For me and I said we're not going to do it that way but we still knew it was going to be very very physical for Randy and, yeah, and, um, and Kate you only have bruises on your knees I would have expected <laughs> more I mean we we have a, a person who's responsible for a fight choreography uh, Craig and Power I Craig believe Power, yeah. Yeah. right number one there is is the safety of the act and they have to rehearse what we call it fight call mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. before each show to make sure that they've got that down and uh, we want to make sure they're safe and selfishly that's so they can come back and do it the next time. <laughs> now, is that rehearsing with the lights on and then doing it again with the lights off? It's obviously two very different things. The fight calls are done with the lights on. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we've had enough rehearsals with lights off to have a feel for what's going to happen there. Is there glow tape on the stage or anything? And Primarily for furniture. Okay. I wasn't sure if there was anything not to kind really of... much yep. to cause. Yeah, I mean, it's like, not, yeah. it's not yeah. visible because the furniture doesn't yeah. really Your move. eyes adjust really quickly. It seems a lot brighter on stage than I feel like you guys can see, because okay. I feel like, oh, they can definitely see everything. No, I can't, see, oh. can't see it at all. It was pretty dark. I Especially was during that big night, and it blackout. Was there was nothing except the two exits on it. I was yeah. very impressed. I, I was sitting there like, oh, God, is something about to jump out at me? <laughs> 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 I think people are really fascinated about the whole acting process yeah. and actors in general. Yeah. Do you have any routines backstage that kind of prepare you to go out and be who you're supposed to be? I feel like you have more of a routine than I do. No, I get there, my makeup's already on, I get into costume, I get all of my props and put them in place, and then I go away. And that's what yeah. I've noticed with him whenever I've worked. You don't Wait. see, you see everybody else, where's Randy? You feel don't worry. Every now and then. Yep. He'll, he'll be here when you need him. Mm -hmm. He's preparing his part. So What's going on in your head during that solitude? Are you 
Oh, I'm, I'm, memories running, as I'm, the character, I'm, I'm or? running lines. I'm walking around like the yeah. character backstage. As they said, there's two nice bad guys in me who get roped into stuff. But for instance, if I'm in a certain place and one of them is making an entrance, and at that time we're apart from each other, I don't look at them. If it's a part where we have planned something, they get the rote smile and the pat on the back, yeah. that kind of thing, and then off I go and I get ready. That rote smile on stage, though. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, the character is <laughs> obviously enjoying being uh, evil, well, that's, enjoying uh, toying there's... with this mouse. You know, it's... it's... <laughs> The, not saying you're a mouse, you know what no, I mean. The way a cat toys with him. That's, yes. <laughs> the way a cat toys with him. Mm-hmm. But yeah. he does. And that's what's so hard about him. Because it would be, and I don't know. You all have to tell him. You guys, when you come and see it, hopefully can tell. The three of us said, I want to go realistically. And when you see Kate, you feel total realism. Road is written in such a way that it can become easily cartoonish mm-hmm. or yeah. or a caricature, which is what I try to avoid, even when he's being other people. That's my biggest focus. Mm-hmm. Getting into my head, but then trying to speak whichever the four come out of me, that it's factual for the people that I have to play opposite yeah. of. Otherwise, their reads won't make sense. And yeah. see, Kate is so good with her reads, it's easy to listen and to react normally to them and to speak yeah. back to her. Yeah, a question that just popped in my head is, being that he's a psychopath, right? Yeah. As an actor, were there certain places when you accepted the role that you thought, I, I can't go there? Because if I go too deep into that part of this character, that is a scary place to be. Because I've had some scary roles, and only mm-hmm. one other other psychopath, but so I've been doing this for centuries. <laughs> <laughs> I learned at a very very young age. There's a play called "And People All Around." Okay. When I was a freshman in college, and I got cast as a Southern sheriff. Come to find out, as I'm reading the script, he was the Grand Wizard of the KKK. Oh. Ooh. Wow. I freaked out. So I found at a very very early age that you have guards up. So if I'm doing a role like this, I've gotten used to the moment. For instance, the moment that blackout happens, Mm -hmm. I just, I hit me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing it for so long, they get out because it it, it can easily. Yeah, I've heard horror stories. Oh, especially, yeah, Yeah. method acting and and the whole thing. You don't get right. Yeah, I've I've heard you horror just, stories. Just, so, yeah, well. So you just snap, your, <laughs> okay. you know, you snap yourself out of yeah. whatever you're doing and become you. Wow, and what oh. excellent control you must have as an artist to be able to do that. That is <laughs> super impressive, and the theater nerd in me is just like you know, it was really impressive, and and it's one of my favorite moments of the show last night. Um, I mentioned that he's got a sadistic side, but yeah. you only see that. In one single line, which I will not tell you what it is, mm-hmm. but when he says it, you'll know what it is. Mm-hmm. It's just, oh, it gave me a chill. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, mm-hmm. Randy, that was great. Really. <laughs> the performances last night were just superb. Caitlin, what is your, before you go on, what's your thing? I am on the opposite end of the spectrum. I am very much last minute Sally get into my costume. <laughs> so I normally come with my makeup on unless mm-hmm. I didn't have time to do it beforehand. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm talking to the kids, I'm eating dinner, yeah. I'm drinking. Most of the time, any show that I'm in, I'll sit outside for a little bit, go through my line, just read through mm-hmm. my lines real quick, just so they're fresh. But other than that, because I have time at the beginning of the show, I don't get dressed until they call places. <laughs> I'm the queen of not getting dressed until like the last minute. Okay. Probably because I like to eat a lot and drink <laughs> while I'm there, so I don't want to get anything on me. And then right before I walk on stage, I just... Slip Snap into in. it, yeah. and then as I come off for a second, I run for my Coke, I chug real quick, and I slip back in as I go back yeah. out. Very cool. I just, mm-hmm. I, and pull I'm against, me- the yeah. Of you. I'm not a Well, I mean, I, I, I say my highs and everything early, you know, <laughs> yeah. the makeup's on and yeah. everything, but once I get my stuff set, but see, that's because I've done it all my life, mm-hmm. and especially 
younger while you're hearing it now. I have a really bad stutter and I have a really bad lisp, but yet I always loved theater mm -hmm. and wanted to be a part of it, yeah. right? I, I was scared for a while when I, when I was younger, several times a day, I'm running lines with my best friend mm -hmm. yeah. and talking about stuff and figuring stuff, but it's my comfort zone. I will be doing my lines every day until the show closes. No, I, I did this, I'm backstage I, I going to. through my script. Yes. It could be the last yes. show of the run. Yeah. Yes. And I'm still going over. Oh, the yeah. Lines. Just, oh again, yeah. Like yeah. Kate says, she's sitting there doing her lines. Yep. Well, one Got thing that. I'll notice about Caitlin is uh, a lot of actors and actresses will leave this to the, the set crew. We have a complicated set, a lot mm -hmm. of props, yeah. a lot of things that that she has to touch without seeing during yeah. the whole show. And she's out there making sure everything's in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. She finds that somewhere between dinner and... and, and <laughs> I have a tucky heart. That, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that, that's pretty cool because we, we expect the set crew to make sure things are preset the right way. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty cool that the actor gets out there and says, well, I'm going to double check and yeah. make sure. Because mm -hmm. they're that's the ones great. that are going to have to mm -hmm. touch it. it it yeah. should be in the right place at the right time. Mike, what was your vision going into this show? What was your ultimate goal that you wanted to achieve? Well, two things. Randy mentioned realism. I, I wanted it to be as real as possible mm -hmm. to almost physical limits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we've achieved that. The other is, as I mentioned about the plot, uh, the terror goes right to the end. And I want to make sure the audience is asking some questions when the lights go out, what, what's really happening here? Yeah. And um, if we don't give the audience that opportunity to ask that question, I feel like we fail. Yeah, I, I love, oh, that's one of the things I love about theater is it gets you thinking. And I feel like if it's a really great show, when you exit that theater, you come out a fuller version of yourself, mm -hmm. which I mean, maybe that sounds kind of like woo woo, like crazy <laughs> theater nerd, but that's, my goal when I go to see a serious show like this is do I come out feeling kind of... Did you experience, like feeling like you experienced right. it? Right, yeah. yeah. You have a brand new experience under your belt and you feel almost a little enlightened in a new way. Yeah, a comment I heard from one of the patrons last night was it was engaging, which yes. is not a word that I would have expected, but I really enjoyed hearing that word. Yeah. No, and it and it was, and yes, I was invested the entire time. That speaks to what you said too before. Two yeah. and a half hours went like yeah. that, be only because we were right. so engaged in what's happening. Right. What would you say the age? I'd say people under ten. I might question whether or not they're ready for it because it does get pretty scary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, you'll leave that up to you know mm -hmm. the the parents. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're the kind of parents where you just want to have those meaningful conversations after the show yeah. and before mm -hmm. the show about, hey, there is evil and it exists out there. And that's why we follow safety precautions and all of these things in our daily lives. And this is a dramatization of the evil that exists out there that we protect you from. You got to come and see it. We're just gushing because it's that good. Yeah. It really is. And these people are brilliant, all of them. It's, uh, it's running January 19th <laughs> to February 4th. That's uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, Sunday. right? Mm -hmm. Every week. You can get tickets at ptplayers.com. Select your seats of your choice. It means a lot to us that you gave us this much time to come down to the podcast story, uh, studio and talk about it. And Thanks for the invitation. Oh, of course. Yeah. We'll be talking about this one. Uh, for a long time. Yeah, uh, truly, this has been a lovely interview, guys. And so cool to get to sit down and talk to you guys and really just understand you guys' methods and the creative choices you're making and why. And yeah, I'm a super theater fan. So yep. this has just been an absolute delight for me. All right, guys, we will be back right after this to close out this episode. Don't go away. Welcome back. That interview. That was... <laughs> That was a lot, lot of information. Very talented people. Yes. Just, I, I, just so pleased that they could spare the time. Yes. Lindsay and I saw the show last night at one of their rehearsals, and he was like, it's scary that the stuff at the end in the dark, it, well, you have to yeah, see we don't, it. Yeah, we don't want to spoil, but I was on the edge of my seat. It was uh -huh. such a visceral experience, and just two and a half hours, but like that. Just I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't believe it was two and a half hours because it's so exciting. You're sitting yeah. there watching, uh, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's done. And I the know. climax of the thing, <laughs> holy cow. <laughs>
So look, seriously, <laughs> you, you got a chance to meet the director and two actors. Now mm-hmm. go to the show. It's an experience. 100%. So, ptplayers.com. Get your tickets. And then just like we started last week, we want to invite you, the viewers, that if you have an event coming up that you think we should talk about right here on the Arts Fan Podcast, you can contact us at our email, lindsay at theartsfam.com, our Instagram at we are the Arts Fam, or our Facebook, the Arts Fam. Or you can leave a comment anywhere you see this video. She or has DMs. all those things tattooed on her arm. That's how <laughs> she, well. she's able to rattle them off like that. So. <laughs> so reach out to us because you never know. You might just be featured. We try to be on top of all the hot stuff going on in three counties, but you know what? We appreciate the the extra heads up. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. As always, thank you so much, you beautiful human beings, for watching us on the Art Fam Podcast! We'll see you next week. Take care.